Courtney Liebendorfer, and I am a master's prepared nurse. And I wanted to talk to you today about the focus of my research while I was in the nursing program at Columbus State University. It has to do with heart failure. And I want to talk today about how we are failing our heart failure patients. And this isn't a new thing. We've been failing them for years. We implemented a Band-Aid approach called the Teach Back Method. Back in 2010, that we thought was going to help them understand the discharge instructions and what they're supposed to do when they leave the hospital to help them succeed in taking care of themselves. Well, the data's in. And since the teach back method was put in place, our readmissions have only gone down 1%. Now, 1%. How significant is that? Well, they started out at 26% of the heart failure patients that were treated went home and then ended up readmitted within 30 days. Now we're at 25%. It was 2010 when we implemented this. I'd say we still have a problem. The focus of my research in my master's program was how we can change things to make things better. As providers, we have a duty to help our patients be as successful as they can be with their self-care. But how can they do that if we are not teaching them properly? Now, I realize I might get a lot of flack for that remark. I can hear the comments about non-compliance flying but you know what? The numbers are in. We're failing these patients. And what I want to put forth to you is to carry the torch. Because I'm going to outline for you three different ways that we can help these patients and help reduce the number of readmissions. But ultimately, providers, it's up to us to make sure that these changes get implemented. Because it's only with the implementation of these changes that things are going to improve for this patient population. So, I'm going to go over these three things right here, right now. And then I'm going to make two videos, one of them for healthcare providers about what needs to be done. And then I'm also going to do another video specifically for heart failure patients and the people that love them on how you can help to improve your health, given the information that you're provided. Because ultimately, yes, we can give all the teaching in the world, and we can give all the tools in the world, but if they're not utilized, they won't be a success. But right now, we're not doing everything we can do. So let's talk about it, shall we? I welcome your comments. The first thing I want to talk about is a psychologist. Why don't we have a psychologist included in the discharge planning team? Because let's face it, how do we know if that person is ready to learn? How do we know if they're ready to Accept the diagnosis. How do we know 
that they are ready to make the changes. How do we know they have family support? How do we know what kind of barriers they face once they go home? Transportation to doctor's appointments? Enough money to eat right? Enough money for medications? Insurance issues? We don't know what all these people face. But until we take the bull by the horns and address it head on, we have no way of making true progress. So my first mandate is we need to include a psychologist in the discharge treatment plan. Now, Taiwan, in my research, implemented this with their heart failure patients. They implemented the use of a psychologist and you know what their readmission rate went down to? 10%. Clearly, if we identify the barriers to success, it makes a tremendous difference. That's area one we need to look at. Area two that we need to look at is people get all this holistic care when they're in the hospital. And then when they go home, they're just left with nothing. It's like a balloon that's filled up with helium and just released out into the environment and it just floats away. You have to have better follow up with these patients. You have to have a plan of action. And part of that plan of action needs to include transition teams. That's right. Don't just send them home with the information. It's not good enough. It's not working. We've seen this for a decade now. It's not working. Transition teams. These are people that go into the patient's home and they look and they see what barriers they have. They can look immediately and see, is there a transportation issue? Is there a financial issue with having the right amount of money to get medicines? Is it a medication issue, remembering to take the medicines? Is it transportation to doctor's appointments? Is it family support? Do they have any? All of these things have to be taken into consideration for a patient's success because if they're not, the patient's not going to succeed. So transition teams are the way of the future. And it's what every hospital sh should be doing. Because I can guarantee you the cost of implementing such a team to follow up with heart failure patients is going to cost a lot less than keep paying for all these readmissions that you're not getting reimbursed for because they're within 30 days and Medicare and Medicaid won't pay. If it's within 30 days and they deem that they were in there for the same reason, that's money out the window because they feel care wasn't done properly the first time. Otherwise, the patient wouldn't be there. That's the second thing we need to do. Implement transition teams. Now, a lot of employers like Emory University does this with success because they do it for new nurses that have come on board to make sure they have a supportive network and they don't feel like they fall through the cracks while they're trying to learn their job because it's very overwhelming for a new nurse to come into a new position and they want them to feel like they have that support. You can do the same thing with a patient. And they have a heart failure management group. If you can do that with new nurses coming on board, then you can do that for heart failure patients. Visit them in the home, find out what's going on. Because the data has shown it doesn't matter if you have a nurse visiting in the home, 
It doesn't matter if you have telemonitoring. It doesn't matter if you have somebody on the phone with them, following up with them and making sure they go to their first appointment. None of these approaches by themselves works. The only thing that works is going in the patient's home and seeing where they're at. Because patient might have barriers that they don't even realize they have. Sure. They might not consider not having transportation an issue because they've never had transportation. So it's up to you to see what all barriers there really are by going in the home. Now, the third thing that we need to do is heart failure patients themselves have said that one of the reasons that they don't comply with the diet and the exercise regimen is because they don't understand the pathophysiology. Let's explain why. I don't know a person on the planet that wouldn't do things better if they didn't understand the why of what they were doing. And is that really too much to ask? I mean, if we really focus on explaining, if you don't follow this diet plan and exercise and take your medicine like you're supposed to, this is what's going to happen to your heart. And show them pictures of what happens. Show them how it remodels. Show them how it changes shape. Show them how it doesn't beat as effectively. And explain that failure to follow the treatment regimen will result in demise. Don't candy coat it, people. Don't candy coat it. They need to understand the gravity of the situation. If you don't follow the situation, the plan, then it's going to get worse. So please take this as a call to action. Take this to your case managers. Take this to your administrators. Take this to your educators in ICU and telemetry. It is up to us to see that we educate these patients properly and that we give them the tools that they need. But at the same time, it's important that we have all of the key players in action. And right now we don't. And Taiwan has showed us that because they added a psychologist to their treatment team. And guess what? 10%. 10% readmission rate. Now, that is just phenomenal. And I'm going to do a follow-up video actually going into the detail of all my research about this. But it's time for us to take the bull by the horns. And it's time to make a difference. And only you can do that. So I'm passing the torch. Think of all your heart failure patients. Think of that patient population. And think about these three things. First, adding a psychologist to the discharge planning team to find out their readiness to learn. You need to know that. Otherwise, you might as well be Bouncing a rubber ball off a wall for all it's going to get through. Two, transition teams. I can't be the first person saying this because I've read research on it, but it's not being done. We have to embrace the concept of going and visiting people in the home. That's the only way you're going to identify the barriers to their success. You can't do it. From the hospital, you have to see where they live. You have to see how they live. It's the only way you're going to know. And thirdly, we need to get a cardiologist or an advanced practice nurse that specializes in cardiology to fully explain the pathophysiology 
of heart failure and how these changes not only are necessary, but how they make a difference. Because it's only when they understand the why that they're going to be on board. So I thank you very much for your time. And I hope you'll pass the torch and pass this message on to those that need to hear it. And look for my further videos on heart failure. Thank you.